Human Rights Watch is a co-founder of the campaign to stop killer robots, like the previous two speakers and others to follow. And Mary Wareham of Human Rights Watch is the global coordinator of the campaign to stop killer robots. As I think everyone knows, the campaign calls for a preemptive prohibition on the development, production, and use of fully autonomous weapons of killer robots. And uh, it would be our preference to see that prohibition in the form of a new CCW protocol. I'd like to highlight what might be called the top five fallacies in these CCW discussions on lethal autonomous weapon systems. These are interrelated fallacies that have the effect and possibly the intention of slowing progress on this issue. The first fallacy, we don't know what we're talking about. We still hear states say that we don't really know what lethal autonomous weapon systems are, so how can we really have meaningful discussions on them? But in fact, we do know what we're talking about uh, collectively uh, in this room. We're talking about future systems that using artificial intelligence and sensors um, operate without meaningful human control and are able to make targeting and kill decisions without human involvement. There are a lot of details and specifics that of course need to be fleshed out, but we know in general what we're talking about. Second fallacy, that we must have an agreed upon definition before we can proceed to formal talks or to really make progress on the issue. But we also should all be aware that in international negotiations, definitions are the last thing that are agreed to. Formal definitions are the very last thing that uh, states will agree on because they are so important and make such a difference in the strength of a treaty or a protocol and what is actually inside and outside. We already have working definitions from the ICRC and others. We have a U.S. definition. What's important is that we all have the same concept a working definition that we can move forward on. And we're already at that stage in these discussions. We'll be farther along after today's sessions, I'm sure. The third fallacy is that it's still premature to move to formal discussions or to move to formal negotiations on this issue. But in fact, we've already done as much preparatory work on this issue as we saw in the CCW for amended protocol two, or for explosive remnants of war, or for the failed negotiations on mines other than anti-personnel mines, or the failed negotiations on cluster munitions. The preparatory work has been done. It is sufficient. We were glad to hear yesterday many, many states, um, I think most of the states who spoke yesterday, were in favor of creating a group of governmental experts to formalize the work here in the CCW. Fourth fallacy, that one week of discussions per year is an adequate approach, is a fruitful approach. This simply is not sustainable. No one has been talking about the necessary time. No one yesterday, I think, at all uh, addressed, uh, well, everybody expressing support for continued work next year. No one's talking about how much work needs to be done. We think four weeks would be a good target for 2017. CCW history clearly shows that you need that kind of time in order to really start to work seriously on an issue. CCW has done that with some of these other issues I've just mentioned, and it needs to be done for lethal autonomous weapon systems as well. And then finally, the fifth fallacy is that existing international humanitarian law is sufficient to deal with this issue, with lethal autonomous weapon systems. If this approach was, this view was also expressed for other weapons that have been prohibited. We've seen that you could make the same argument that, that uh, international humanitarian law was sufficient for chemical weapons, for biological weapons, for landmines, for cluster munitions, for blinding lasers. But in each case, states recognized that there was a real benefit in having additional law 
beyond existing IHL. Fully autonomous weapons represent a new category of weapons that could change the way wars are fought and pose serious risks to civilians, and as such, they demand new specific law that clarifies and strengthens existing IHL. It's only with new law that you get the stigmatization effect that is so crucial in uh, successfully dealing with uh, a, 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 a weapons ban or even weapons restrictions. Indeed, if, I felt, if IHL was sufficient, there'd really be no reason to have these discussions. You just have faith that uh, it would succeed. I'd also like to point out for, uh, for uh, the states that Human Rights Watch has prepared a memorandum for delegates that focuses on meaningful human control. It discusses the moral and legal importance of control and shows countries growing recognition of the need for humans to remain in charge of the critical functions of selecting and firing on targets. The report also examines rules requiring control in different areas of the law and how they could inform how the term is understood in the context of autonomous weapons. It notes that bans on mines, biological weapons, and chemical weapons show the value disarmament law has placed on control of weapons. In closing, let me say that the drumbeat for a ban is getting louder and louder, and it cannot be ignored. We were very pleased, based on their statements yesterday, to add Algeria and Costa Rica to our list of states that have called for a preemptive prohibition on lethal autonomous weapon systems. We are now well over 3,000 artificial intelligence experts who signed an open letter calling for the ban. We saw a high-level panel at the Davos World Economic Forum earlier uh, this year uh, support a ban in large part, including an industry executive. We saw the same at a Munich Security Forum panel. Yet technology is racing ahead in spite of this <coughs> drumbeat. This is perhaps notable in recent weeks with the many uh, press articles about the US's third offset strategy, which is based on ever increasing autonomy, including the possibility of full autonomy for weapon systems. We must act now. We believe that as provided for in the mandate, it's crucial that states this week agree on concrete recommendations to be put forward to the Fifth Review Conference in December of this year. We believe that the, the key recommendation should be that states should in December agree to a mandate to establish a group of governmental experts, an open-ended group of governmental experts, and that GGE should be tasked with beginning formal negotiations of a new CCW protocol on lethal autonomous weapon systems. We believe that mandate should state that the negotiation should be aimed at a prohibition on the development, production, and use of lethal autonomous weapon systems. And we believe that, uh, that the recommendation should be to set aside at least four weeks for this work in 2017. It's in this way that the CCW will be able to react with the urgency uh, and, and broad vision that is required for this issue. Thank you.